Have you ever seen the Christmas movie, How the Grinch Stole Christmas? The Grinch had an idea as to how to keep Christmas from coming. And his idea was this. He turned his little dog into a reindeer by putting some antlers on his head. Made him pull a big sled down to Whoville. Then the Grinch took all the Christmas trees, all the presents, and all the decorations from Whoville, loaded them into his sled, and took them out of Whoville. Well, the Grinch had a problem. He just didn't like Christmas. And he also had another problem that was bigger. His heart was too small, so he wasn't able to find the joy in Christmas. Did he succeed? Did he take Christmas away from the Who's in Whoville? No, he did not. Even though he tried to take Christmas away, he couldn't because he couldn't take away their love. And that is what Christmas is all about. What happened when the Who's woke up on Christmas morning and they looked around and they noticed all their Christmas presents, Christmas trees, and decorations were gone? They formed a circle. They held hands and sang a song. So nothing was able to keep Christmas from coming in Whoville. And at the very end, we found out that the Grinch wasn't a bad guy. He just needed love. Christmas is all about love. And as I thought about what I wanted to say to you, speaking so close to Christmas, the Advent message kept coming to me of love and joy. This is what Jesus taught. I saw it beautifully illustrated in this Christmas classic. I wanted to share pieces of it with you and talk a little about how I see the Grinch story unfolding. The Grinch's real problem was that his heart was too small. And I believe that is one of the things we often find ourselves experiencing in life, a sense of ourselves as being somewhat unworthy, which sometimes comes in the form of anger, jealousy, possessiveness, shame, or even guilt. I've even come to the place of believing that whenever you're experiencing any negative state of mind, it really has to do with our own sense of unworthiness in life. We have a God-given right to be here. What represents a Grinch state of consciousness? He is really loving all along. Though he appeared to be trying to take Christmas away from everybody else, what he really wanted was to have his own spiritual Christmas experience. But he didn't look at it that way. Sometimes as we approach the Grinches in our lives, it doesn't seem as though they are there to bring us a gift of something good. Sometimes we think the reverse. All the Who's down in Whoville, on the other hand, represent those parts of ourselves that are loving, that truly want to spiritually experience Christmas as an opportunity to be filled with love and of joy. No matter who we are, what we're encountering in life at any time, we have the opportunity to adopt either a Grinch state of mind or a Who state of mind. Sometimes we may feel as though these characters are imposed upon us from somewhere outside of us. But the truth is we know life is spiritually within and so without. So if we encounter a Grinch somewhere in the world outside of us, 
Where does the Grinch really live? Nowhere but in our own thoughts and awareness. And we must focus spiritually on the power to change within. This makes the decision to be a who or a Grinch very much our own choice. We really are not victims of circumstances or the actions of the activities of other people outside of us. We are always, moment by moment throughout our lives, making a choice as to whether to view the experiences that come to us from the perspective of the Grinch or that sense of learned unworthiness that we accumulate through life, or we can choose to see opportunities in our lives as opportunities and chances to love, chances to affirm our natural worthiness and live in joy. You see, our natural state is one of worthiness. It is one that knows, as Jesus said to us, that we are children of God. What could possibly be more worthy than a child of God? But oftentimes, we are not very convincing with ourselves because we were little children and there were were many aspects of ourselves that we were taught not to appreciate when we were little kids. I think of this as the difference between the recognized spirituality of us and the unrecognized spirituality of us. We must, this Christmas season, birth a new awareness in us following Jesus Christ. The truth is, my friends, that we are, right now, living in the kingdom of God. But we do not always choose to perceive our lives as kingdom experiences. We always have that opportunity, but it's not always easy to choose it because of the aspects of ourselves that we have learned to deny, those aspects that make us feel so unworthy. What happens when we're in a Grinch consciousness? Well, just like the Grinch in the movie, we have a tendency to want to persecute, and yes, even to be persecuted. So, the unpleasant episodes that we have in our lives, oftentimes experiences in which we're trying to inflict a certain kind of punishment or torture on ourselves or on others is not true. It is not necessary for us to go on living that way any longer. It is possible for us to live in a world of love. This means that the Christmas experience can become incredibly real to us if we will take an adventure from right this moment through Christmas. We begin to view opportunities or experiences in our lives as the chances in which we can bring forth this who consciousness, this consciousness of love, this consciousness of worthiness, this consciousness of joy. If we are truly following Jesus Christ, we have to realize who we are. We can begin to see that everything in life is sacred, one presence and one power of God. Everything is sacred. Our relationships with our families, friends, co-workers are sacred. When we encounter unpleasant experiences with them, it is an opportunity to see the Grinch part of ourselves that still needs healing, that still needs prayer, that still needs to move from the unrecognized spiritual to the recognized spiritual human. And we can do this. We are empowered, especially at Christmas time. Everything in life is sacred. 
the time that we have between now and Christmas, it is a great opportunity. It could not be a greater time than this, than the gathering of friends time and family time, with the stresses of buying that last gift or whatever might be on your list to complete. The tendency is to let that Grinch, the old cynical part of us, rise forth from within us. What we need to do is to love the Grinch. When the Who's in Whoville loved the Grinch, what happened? He became loving also. He wanted to share. And so the neglected parts of ourselves want to share the spiritual of the Christmas experience. We are at a critical time in human history. We are at a time in human evolution where we can begin to make choices. We do not have to live as unconscious victims any longer. So when we encounter friction in our lives, difficulty in a relationship, or when things appear not to be going the way that we would like them to go, we can make a choice. And we do the positive choice. The first thing that is necessary to move from a Grinch into a Who is to develop a part of yourself that can become gentle, non-judgmental, an observer of your own activities. It's hard for us to move out of the Grinch state of consciousness if we don't care, if we don't even realize we're in it, or if we're always seeing that Grinch in other people and blaming it on them and never recognizing that it resides in us. Otherwise, we would be oblivious to it. We cannot go on living that way for decades or we'll live a life of unhappiness because we're making unhappy choices in our attitudes. We're not pulling far enough away from our own behavior in life to be able to observe it non-judgmentally or gently and be able to say, if I am experiencing a Grinch out here, there must be a Grinch within here somewhere that has been activated. This is a spiritual opportunity for us to find and claim our own worthiness as a child of God, to choose joy and happiness instead of fear and unhappiness. What better way to follow Jesus this Christmas time? It is a choice that we will make many, many times every day of our lives, from the simpler, simplest gesture to um, a huge one inside of us spiritually. We become aware of the opportunity, and we take it. And we take it to become a who, to live in a who state of consciousness, instead of a Grinch and what better time than right now, this Christmas, to ask for God's help in doing just that, to turning our consciousness into one that is a loving state of consciousness. When we find ourselves in the days that come, experiencing the Grinch even a little bit, because of all the drama we just take a moment to remember that everything in life is sacred. And then we bring the greatest Christmas gift to our consciousness that we can bring. That we're one with God, we're not alone. That we have the power to overcome the old days and to realize that we have a wonderful ability through God to find love and to find joy, to experience it every moment of Christmas and the new year. As we move into this new time in human consciousness, we will find that this tradition 
of celebrating Jesus' birth is actually a living process that takes place day to day within us. I wish you a very Merry Christmas to all of my friends, all of the who's out there, because you know who you are.